Hey friends, it's Len here at 1A Auto. Today I'm working on a 2015 Chevy Equinox. We're gonna be doing a fan shroud or fan assembly. It's gonna be a fairly easy job. I wanna be the guy that shows you how to do it. If you need any parts or instructional videos, you can always check us out at 1AAuto.com. Thanks. Okay, so one of the first things that we're gonna do is we're gonna relieve pressure right here. If the vehicle's been running and it's hot, there might be a lot of pressure and there's gonna be hot coolant in there. So when you go to release this, it might wanna release pressure towards your face. So make sure that everything's cool. This engine hasn't been running in a while, so it should be good to go. I'm just gonna hold it down while I go, just in case there is pressure. Cool, we'll remove that. We'll take a look at it. Check, see if it looks like the gasket in there looks like it's torn or ripped or cracked. Looks pretty decent. Don't worry about any of that, it's no big deal. We'll set this aside, take a peek inside. I don't see any creamy colors or anything like that. Sometimes if you look inside your cooling system, you'll see like a cream. Uh, that could be oil or some other type of uh, contaminant inside your cooling system, at which point you wanna make sure that you flush it, okay? This one looks great, so we don't have to worry about that. We've got the cap off. Now we're gonna go ahead and bring up the vehicle. We're gonna raise and support it so it's nice and safe. Okay, so right here, this is your coolant petcock. It's on the bottom of the radiator on the passenger side. We're gonna turn this to the left coolant's gonna come out of this little nub right here, okay? It's gonna come down, it's gonna make a mess, probably splash. Um, so you wanna have a uh, recycling receptacle, something that you can recycle your coolant with. Hand safety, eye safety, okay? Safety first. I'm just gonna take it, I'm gonna try to turn it to the left, see if I can break it free. Sometimes they turn, sometimes they don't. If you weren't replacing the radiator, but you were just trying to drain the coolant, it might be better just to try to pull the uh, lower hose um, because sometimes these do break and in which case you'd have to replace the radiator. So we've got the radiator draining down there. It's going into our recycling receptacle. We're gonna let it continue doing its thing. But what I wanna do is I wanna try to get to where the radiator is from up here, okay? So I'm gonna start taking things apart while that's draining. Why waste any time, right? There's some little push clips here. You just find a little tab, lift up on it. It should just pull right out. The way these work is the center of it pulls up and out from the outer part and it releases these tabs, okay? So I'll set this aside. I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull all these little tabs. If you have one of these little forky looking tools, these are great. Under the edge of this, there's gonna be some little clips. I'll show you what they look like. There it is. Right here, okay. If you happen to notice that one of these ears right here is missing one of the clips, they're probably right inside these slots. If they are, just take them out of the slot, put them back on the plastic. It's very important. You can't leave them in here and try to force the plastic in there. It really doesn't work out as well, okay? So that's easy enough. We'll put this aside. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side over there, and then we'll come along the front as well. So the headlamp assembly is held in by a few bolts. There's a 10 millimeter head down inside this hole right here. You're gonna need something with a long extension, I'm sure, to get down in there. And then you have a seven, a seven, and then there's another bolt hidden right behind this fender that we're gonna to get to in a minute. But first we'll take off the top three, and then we'll go ahead and we'll try to find the one under there. I'll show you what it looks like. We'll get it out, and we'll keep on rolling from there, okay? So here we go, 10. I'm gonna turn it to the left. Let's see if I can grab a magnet down in there. There's our 10, okay, easy peasy. We'll set this aside. We'll go ahead and remove the others. We've got the seven, seven, and then like I said, we've got another bolt hidden behind the fender here that I'll show you how to get to in a minute. I've got our two seven millimeter head bolts out, one from there, one from here. We can move this around a little bit. So now I'm gonna use a Torx Bit 20. That's called a T20, looks like a little star. It's kind of pretty. I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna remove these four. Here's what they look like, they're all the same. Can't mix them up, easy peasy. Put those aside, give this a little tug, it moves nice and easy now. So we're gonna do some uh, push clips here. We got a push clip right there, okay? There's gonna be another one right in front of this tire, right there, here, and here. After we remove those, there's a T20 and a T20 there. Same tool that we used up top, we're gonna use down bottom. Okay, 
So I got my little forky tool. I got a little pocket screwdriver. Just gonna see about trying to pull out the centers of these push clips. I showed you how they worked already. I move down the line. Grab this guy. This one's gonna be a little harder to get to because of the tire, but I'm sure it can be done. Okay, got our push clips. We'll set it aside. Got our T20. Here, here. They both look the same. Easy peasy, can't mix them up. Feels pretty great. Take a peek under here. We've got that bolt right there. I'm gonna grab the size for that real quick. I'll let you know what it is. Once we get that out, we're gonna do the same exact thing for the other side of the vehicle. And then we'll lift it up more and we'll grab everything from underneath. So we got our seven millimeter. I'm gonna blast this out of here. There it is. Set that aside. Okay, and give that a little tug. Perfect. So now, like I said, we're gonna go do the same exact thing on the other side of the vehicle. We'll raise it up. We'll continue on releasing the rest of this bumper cover. Disconnect the fog lights, of course. And then we should be clear to bring it back down and pop it all right off. So under here, we've got our fog light assemblies. You can see them from the back side. We've got some wiring that goes to the bulb. Uh, we're just gonna turn the bulb to the left, counterclockwise, until it stops. And then we're gonna carefully pull it out See? All right. So something to note, you want to be very careful not to touch on that glass, especially if you've got oily hands or anything like that. Even gloves isn't really the best to touch the glass. So if you can avoid it, that's always great. Take a look, see if it looks like it's black in any way or discolored or swollen or the, uh, the filament inside looks like it's got any like crusty buildups on it. If that was the case, you'd want to replace it. And right on the back of the bulb, you can see what the bulb number is. It's an H11 on this particular vehicle. So I'm sure it is on yours as well, if you're working on the same thing. I'm just gonna leave this down to dangle. Um, it's a funny word, but anyway, I'm gonna leave it so it can hang like that. And um, I'm gonna do the same to the other side, and then we'll just go ahead and we'll remove a couple more bolts here. This part right here is part of the inner wheel well that we did, we're taking apart up there. So we wanna remove these two bolts. We're gonna continue with our seven millimeter. Turn these to the left, obviously. Come right along. This little electric tool is amazing. Slides out. It's clear to come off. It's got a little triangle here, okay? So when you pull it off, you can see, that just means when you're putting it back together, that triangle is gonna go back under there, okay? Just holds it. You can put your bolts back in. Easy peasy, okay? Cool, so this is wobbling around pretty easily now. I would say we're clear to bring it back down and we'll start pulling it off. We're gonna hold our bumper cover, make sure it doesn't wanna come loose too much on us until we can figure out exactly what's going on. Now don't forget we have our fog lamp bulbs just hanging under there, okay? So the less that we jiggle this around, probably the better overall. Let me see if I can get this off. There we are. Now we've removed our front bumper cover. So since we removed all the top bolts already, we were down to just having one left. It's in the third hole down, okay? Just a seven millimeter, same tool we've been using. Turn to the left. Get that right out of there, maybe. There it is. About the same as all the rest of them. Put it up where we can find it. Now I'm gonna take our unit gonna lift it up. We've got a little bit of wiring back here. Let's see if I can turn it so we can all see it. There it is. And use our pocket screwdriver again. I love this tool. 
This gray thing right here is just a lock, okay? So you wanna try to push it in and up. Okay, that's all it is. And that just prevents this from being able to get pushed like that and pulled out. Now that we have it off, just take a peek inside here. This is the wiring harness, of course. If you see any funny colors, rainbow colors, rust, uh, debris, water, anything, you wanna make sure it's cleaned up or replaced. So we've got 10, 10, 10, 10. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. There we are. Got our all four bolts out. They all look the same. Put those aside all in one pile. Grab this. Right here is your tranny cooler line. Okay, comes down. Connects into the radiator right there. And then there's another one, a lower one, that's down next to the lower hose. We won't worry about that yet. I'm gonna show you this one. This black thing right here, it's just a cover. It's plastic, can be fragile, so. And it is important, by the way. So if you break it, well, you're gonna wanna do something about that. Because underneath it, there's this little clamp. It's kinda like, a, almost like a C, like that. And it just kinda goes inside this little groove right here, and it holds the line in. Um, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna take that clamp, separate it, and get it off of there. Um, there's spring tension, so once you get it, it seems like it's coming off. It might come off and go pew, and go someplace, we don't know where. Uh, so you wanna make sure you wear your safety glasses. You're gonna wanna have a magnet handy. Um, so once it starts coming up, you can just grab it with a magnet, that'll be helpful for you. You can use the tool that's designed for it. It looks something like this. Maybe yours is a little less mangled, or maybe you don't even have one, which is fine. Um, all you do is you just put this on the line like that, and then just kind of turn it and push at the same time until it gets locked in. And then give it a twist, and it lifts up on the, um, on the little ears of the clamp for you, okay? You can go about doing it that way. Or if you're a regular person and you just don't happen to have this thing, which is pretty possible or probable, just do something like this. You can take a pick, okay? I'm just gonna come around from this side. I'm gonna try to lift up on the ear. Once I get this off, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. And um, that way there you can, it'll be easier to figure out how to do it once you know what it looks like, okay? So I'll just get this in here real quick. And I'll get my hand out of the way. There we go, okay. So I've got my magnet up against the clip now. I'm just gonna try to work it off. Okay. So here's what the clip looks like, okay? Spring tension, wait, 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 bends, okay? If you uh, took it apart and it's very rusted and it's very weak, it doesn't have any more spring tension, you'd wanna replace this, okay? Because what this does, I'll put it aside for now, is it holds the line into the little uh, adapter here. So now you just pull out the line. The clip sits inside that groove. I'll grab my screwdriver. There's a groove right here, goes all the way around, okay? Has little slots. And then this right here has a lip. I don't know if you can see it with the camera, but there is one. When you slide the line, the line in, it goes clip. And then once it locks in, you just go ahead and put that clip and it sits on the back side of that, okay? So, there's that. That one's off. We're gonna bring the vehicle up. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other line that's under there. I can show you that as well if you want. And um, then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna keep on moving. So right here's the other tranny cooler line that I told you about. It goes to the bottom of the radiator. That's this. We got the radiator hose here with a clamp. Okay? So all we're gonna do, we're gonna take this plastic off like I told you. And then I'm gonna remove this clamp just like I did the upper one. I'll get the line out of there and we'll move along. So right here, this is our tranny cooler lines that we just took off from the radiator, right? This is where they mount to the fan shroud. The fan shroud connects to the radiator. So we're just gonna make sure we have plenty of room with those lines so they don't get tugged or pulled or anything. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, uh, this is just a bent screwdriver, but you can use whatever you've got. And we just wanna try to separate this so we can get the lines out. There's just a little hooky do there. See right here, comes out and then back up. Looks almost kind of like it goes up at this angle and it just slides into there, okay? So now we get the lines so they can move around. 
We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off this low radiator hose. So we're gonna move our coolant uh, recycling receptacle over here. And then we'll take off this clamp and it's gonna let coolant out. So watch your face if you're gonna be underneath it. And of course, wear your hand protection still. So here's our radiator hose, the lower hose. There's our clamp. You can use something as simple as pliers if you want. They also have a, uh, you know, a clamp tool that you can use. Not everybody has access to that, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use something that, generally speaking, most people do have access to, pliers. A little squeeze. Just gonna try to work it over a little bit. Okay. Now, like I said, when we take this off of the radiator, there's still gonna be coolant inside here, okay? So it's gonna come down, you get all in here, I'm splashing down, maybe get in our face. Please make sure you're wearing a safety glasses, eye protection of some sort. I'm gonna grab the hose. I'm just gonna wiggle it, try to break it free from the radiator. There we are. It was a little anticlimactic. I was kind of thinking more was gonna come out, but that's okay. All about safety. Not about the fun of it, I guess. Now I'm just gonna wiggle that lower transmission cooler line, break it free too. Cool. So here we have the fan shroud, right? We've got our little connector on here. This is on the passenger side. There's also one for the fan on the driver's side, obviously. But I did want to specify that there's two. <laughs> um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push on this center tab I'm trying to poke at it with my screwdriver right here just to show you, but what I'm actually gonna do is do it with my hand. So now that I've showed you it, I'm gonna try to get my hand up in here and give it a little squeeze. And I'm gonna try to pull, just give the harness a little tug. There we go. Work it out, take a look at it, see if there's any funny colors. I don't see anything that looks out of the ordinary. It looks nice and clean, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take out this little clip right here. Use something like a little forky tool if you have one. Just try to pull it out of the shroud. They got like all these little teeth on them. Really grip in. <laughs> Everything's harder on camera, I tell ya. I'm gonna grab my cutters, and I'm gonna grab onto it. Try not to cut it, but just grab onto it and then try to pry it. That'll be helpful. Like I said, I'm gonna be careful not to cut it. All I wanna do is grab it and uh, just give it enough to pry and twist. There we are. Still reusable. There's another one that looks like it's up here. Probably be easier to get from up top, so I'll do that. Um, we can come over to the left side and see if we can find other one. That one I believe is going to be easier from the top as well. And yeah, that'll definitely be easier from up top. So we'll go back up top. So here we go. We're over on the driver's side now. We've got our electrical connector that leads up to the fan shroud right here. We've got our little clippy do that holds the wiring to the fan shroud. So we're going to be removing that and we're going to be taking this off of the uh, fan shroud. Okay. So to do this, same thing as the other side, the passenger side. You squeeze in the center right here, it's a little tab, and then you just kind of rock it back and forth as you're pulling out, and it should slide out. This one right here, we're just gonna use our little fork tool, and maybe our cutters again, and we're just gonna pry it right out. So here we go. I'm gonna stick my hand in, and try to use my index finger. There we go. We always take a look at electrical connectors, make sure there's no funny colors, rust or rainbow colors, nothing like that's good in there. Uh, it looks pretty great, so that's definitely reusable. If it wasn't, we could clean it or replace it, but it looks good. So now I'm going to use my little uh, forky tool. I'm just going to try to pry this out of here. There we go. Got the majority of it out before it broke, so I'll just push that back through, and then I'll use whatever's left, and it should hold in well. I'm not worried about it. Perfect. So, we got both fans disconnected now. 
that looks great. Show you where we're going next. So right here, the fan shroud mounts to the radiator. There's a 13 millimeter head bolt, okay? And over on the passenger side, there's gonna be a bolt that looks about the same, 13 millimeter. We're gonna remove the pair of these and we'll set those aside and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I got my 13. I've got a small ratchet, a little extension on there. I'm just gonna remove this bolt and then I'm gonna go over and do the same thing on the other side of the vehicle. There it is, easy peasy. This side's a little bit harder to get to. You've got, you know, your upper radiator hose here, your AC lines there. Uh, that's another thing to speak of, is we're gonna have to try to finagle the radiator out around some AC stuff. Um, you wanna be very careful with any AC lines when you're moving them around. It's under high pressure, and the refrigerant in there is dangerous to your health, of course, and the environment. Save the penguins and the unicorns and Sasquatch and all them. There we are, bolt number two. We'll set it with the other one. Let's we'll give it a little wiggle. Cool. I'm gonna lift it up. Try to get it out of its hooks on the radiator. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if I can see them. I can. Uh, my little tool. Right down, oops, sorry. Right down here, I got my tool. On the radiator, there's these little hooks, okay? Um, the shroud just basically sits down inside those. There's one on the driver's side as well, okay? Once you slide it down in there, you bolt in the top up here, it's nice and secured. So there's only two bolts going across the top and then down at the bottom, there's the little hooks. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our pliers again. We're gonna squeeze this clamp and we're gonna remove the upper radiator hose from the upper portion of the radiator. I'm just using these pliers. I'm just gonna grab the hose. See if I can work it off of here. Mm -hmm. See if we can get the clamp out of the way. There we go. Cool. That down. Awesome. Move it out of the way wherever we need to put it. We're gonna take out these two. Just use our 13 that we were using earlier. One bracket, okay, set that aside. That's what our bolt looks like. That aside as well. Come right over here. There we are, same as the other one. I'll put them both right next to each other. Be super easy to find that way. When it comes time to put everything together, it's nice to have all the bolts that you take apart from a certain job together. That way there, when you look at it, you say, okay, I've got two of these, well, I got two holes. Well, I got four of these, well, I got four holes, you know? Eh, easy peasy. Cool, so now everything's moving around all willy-nilly. That's kind of nice. Next, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna separate the AC condenser, which is this right here, from the radiator, which is this right here. We've got a bolt there. We'll come across, there's gonna be another bolt right behind here, okay? What I'm gonna do is, since they're a little rusted, I'm just gonna spray them down with some uh, penetrant. I'm gonna let them sit for a second, and then I'm gonna go ahead and try to loosen those up. These are your AC lines that come down. They go right into here, okay? Even though there's rubber, that makes it so it's, everything's pretty flexible, so you can move stuff around like this, that's always good. There is also a possibility that you might put a tug on something, and if you break this line free right here, like I said before, this is all under pressure. So, um, you know, you don't wanna breathe this in if, God forbid, something did happen and it did end up leaking, uh, but you wanna make sure that you're safe, safety first, of course, okay? Uh, so eyes, hands, if it does start leaking, make sure you don't breathe in any of the vapors, okay? So for this, I'm gonna use a 13 millimeter ratchet wrench. You can use whatever you have access to. Um, if you needed to, you could probably take this plastic shroud right off of here, it's just a little push clip and stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about that. I have access to a ratchet wrench. So I'm just gonna try to give it a couple bonks and break it free. 
Here we go. I'll remove this bolt completely and then I'll move over to the other side and do the same. We got the uh, passenger side out. I'm over on the driver's side now. I'm gonna use my 13 millimeter wrench, of course. And this one right here is a lot more rusted than the other side. That's why I started with the other side. I sprayed the heck out of this thing with my penetrant. And all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn it a couple cranks to the left and then bring it a couple cranks to the right, back and forth a bunch of times until I get it so it comes completely out. I wanna be careful not to break the plastic on the radiator. Not because I'm worried about the radiator so much as that I need this clip right here. Um, and it might be harder to get off once it's all broken apart. So we're gonna just go ahead and take our time on it and see what we can do. Go Team Blue. Mm -hmm. Just try to get that penetrant worked in there. Let it do its job. Almost there. Let's see if I can get it out. There we are, bolt number two. We'll set this aside. Just like the fan shroud, when we were putting it into the, um, the radiator, the radiator had a little hooky-do. On the other side of the radiator, the uh, AC condenser does the same thing. The radiator has a hooky-do, and the bottom of the condenser slides right into it, okay? Once it's slid in, you go ahead and you tighten up the upper bolt, and it locks it in nice and firm. So since we just removed the uppers, right, the upper bolts, now we can just take this, I'm gonna put down my light. And we can do this. That's nice, isn't it? So that's gonna release from down there in one second. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Once we get it so it's all moving freely, we'll move on to the next step. So right here, there's a little push clip. There's one over there as well. We're gonna try to get this plastic piece up and out of the way because behind here, where those forks are, or the little hooky do on the radiator that the condenser slides into, has like a little prong, it's a little locking prong to make sure that you can't lift up on that condenser too much. We need to get to there and move that prong so we can relieve pressure from the condenser. So, I'm just gonna take out this, use my little forky tool or whatever you happen to have. We just wanna try to pull it out. Um, maybe it'll be easier coming from this side, I don't know, there we go. All I did from the back side there was just go between the condenser and the plastic and push the plastic away. Okay, easy peasy. Come over here, I'm gonna do the same thing. From the back side there. Our little plastic pitons, cool. Get this all separated. Cool. So we're gonna grab our little forky tool we're gonna pull out these ones down here. It's just more of these little itty bitty push clips. And another one over on this side. Do the same thing. Let's see if I can get it. Nothing special. Cool. It's looking pretty good. I just wanna to try to grab the condenser now, pull it out of the radiator itself. There we are. Cool. Still got more cooler coming, so just tip it a little bit. Try to get as much cooling as possible. Hopefully, it won't get any on us or on the uh, on the ground, contaminate the environment or anything like that. Condenser separated from the radiator. Hopefully, get the fan shroud pushed away enough. So we're gonna just try to move this uh, AC condenser around, right? Make sure that it's free from the radiator. And we're gonna to try to grab our fan shroud, try to move it. We'll notice that this clip right here is still kind of attached to the condenser. So just kind of move it, gives you more room. That's cool. Grab our fan shroud, try to pull it away from the radiator. Nice. All I'm trying to do at this point is just try to weasel the radiator out without trying to lift up too much on this line. If I lift up on the radiator, I could bend this line and then break it someplace, and I'm gonna have an issue, okay? Theoretically, if you had an AC machine, uh, not everybody has one of those in their garage, or, you know, driveway, <laughs> uh, you can hook it up to your AC ports. There's one here. Um, 
the other one's located around here someplace. I could probably look a little harder for it, but I got my hand on the radiator here. So I'm just gonna continue on with what I'm doing, which is trying to get this radiator out of here, right? That's what we're trying to do. Now, your particular vehicle might put up a little bit different of a fight than this one, because who knows, maybe you got your radiator to get into a different area than me. We all got our own fight to get through here. So, uh, you know, we're gonna have to start moving things around. I wanna get this out of the way. Hopefully I'm gonna get the fan shroud up and out. The, um, the hood release is in the way. So I'm just gonna disconnect the wiring here. Pull that off and pull this out of here, just like that. 13 millimeter, 13 millimeter, get it out of the way, okay? We'll turn these to the left, just like everything else. When we're taking it off, you turn it to the left. There we go. Two more bolts for our collection. Put them over here so we can't mix them up with all the rest of them. Somehow. Now I'm just gonna see if I can get my fan shroud to uh, weasel its way up and out of here. Hopefully it'll give us some more room to get the radiator out. This is my plan. A little connector right here. Or, um, you know, push clip thing. Just try to get that out of there. There we go. Do everything I can not to break this, obviously. Cool. Now we've removed our fan shroud. Okay, so now it's time to go ahead and reinstall our fan assembly here, fan shroud, whatever you want to call it. I would call it a fan assembly. Um, I'm just gonna brace, basically bring it in like this. Slide it in, once I get it down, I'm gonna to try to weasel it like this, and then slide it into position where it's sitting in the little hooky doos on the radiator, and it lines up with the mounting holes here. Also, these clips right here, see if I can show it from the side, I kinda of do this, right? Those sit over the lip of the radiator, okay? So, just keep that in mind. So, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm gonna be careful for the you know, um, radiator fins. I'm just gonna try to pull this. If it doesn't seem like it wants to go far enough, you know, maybe just try pulling the radiator up and out of the, um, the little slots that it's in, you know? Just move stuff around a little bit. You do you, boo-boo. Whatever it takes to get the job done. Nice and easy. If it seems like it's getting caught on something, well, just work it, because it uh, could be getting caught on a radiator fin or something. You really don't want that. Mm -hmm. Bring it over. Okay. Mm Cool beans. Okay. Loving it. Loving it. So we get that going good. Let's see if we can get this on this side. I don't know if we really have to latch that in yet, right? We just gotta get the fan shroud up high enough to get it into the hooky do on the radiator. Close. Let's see if we can move this side. Mm, let's see. Looks good. Grab this side. Looks good. Okay, now I'm just gonna lift it back up. I'm gonna try to get these up and over that. So. Nice. 
Love it. It's looking great. It's in down there. It's in on that side. I checked it. We've got our hooks. We can go ahead and bolt this in right here. Okay. So I'm going to grab my bolts. So we've got four of these. They're just little nut inserts and they slide into the radiator. There's like a little slot for them. Okay. And just drop right in. You can push them in if you want. They just got to line up with the hole. Okay. There's another one on the back side here. And do the same thing. I'm just going to slide them in. Click it in. It was right there. One right here. Right here, click in. Let me see. All right. One right here. go. Cool. So now we'll grab our fan shroud bolts. That's these two. We remember when we removed them. Okay. I'm just going to uh, move this around a little bit until it lines up with the, uh, the nut certs there. And start it in. Now these nuts that we just put in, they're only mounted into plastic. So it's easy to over tighten something like this and give yourself big issues down the line. Um, so basically, once it's tight, let me get this thing. So out. Once it feels like it's snug and it bottoms, just give it maybe like a teeny bit more, just enough so it's not going to come loose on you. But you definitely don't need a reef on it. I wouldn't use a ratchet any longer than this. Um, just because you don't want to break your new radiator. If you were going to have to replace it, I guess now would be the time where <laughs> everything's pretty much apart already. Um, not to say that you want to do it. You know. So it's pretty much bottomed. Just give it a little bit. It's good. Move over to this one. We're using our 13 millimeter socket, of course. Okay, bottomed. There we are. Nice and snug. We're still in all our little, uh, we're in the hooky doos down there. We got our hooks here, a hooky do down here. Feels good. Fan shroud, nice and firm to the radiator. Perfect. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our fan uh, wiring. Okay. We already checked it. There's no rust or any funny colors in there. We're just going to put them back in the holes we got them from. Should just slide right in. Hopefully. Oh, this one goes down here. Duh. Let's see if I can get it. There it is. Listen for a click noise. There it is. Give her a tug. Feels good. I'm going to do this one. Same situation over here. I'm just going to see if I can I gotta push that end through. There we are. With my clip. We already checked it. Made sure there's no funny colors, rust or anything. Looks great. I'm going to line it up with where it's supposed to go. I'm going to listen for a click. Good. Give it a little wiggle. It's not coming off. Wonderful. Let's keep moving. Um, let's see. We've got our tranny lines. Put our upper one here, lower one here. I'm going to switch them around. There we go. Let's see if I got it going the right way. This one's going to go. I can get my head out of the way. <laughs> okay. All right. So the one that goes to the upper goes on the engine side, basically as it comes around. And then the one that goes to the lower runs along this way. So it's not lower one and then upper one. It's vice versa. So the lower one uh, stays closest. Okay. And then the upper one kind of rides around the outside of that. So all you're going to do you're going to take your lines and line them up where they're supposed to go. When you put these in, you have to make sure that you really try to give them a tug afterward because you can think you got them all the way in and sometimes you just don't, okay? So I'm going to leave this one off so we can get it from the bottom and I can show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to try to get my arm out of here. I'll do this one real quick, hopefully. And my little black thing. I'm going to lose that, right? Okay. I'm just going to bring it in, 
try to get it lined up. Now it can look like I've got it in all the way, but really I don't. If I give this a tug, right, I didn't get that lip past our clip. So I'm just gonna push, wiggle. Sometimes this is much easier when it's actually, you know, uh, attached into the vehicle. So that way there you can pry, do all that. There we go. I felt it click in. I can't see any yellow sticking out past there. And that ring's definitely in there. One way to double check really, is if this thing, you can't push it up and over, then you know it's not all the way locked in. So, we're just gonna go like that. Slid right over nice and easy. So that means that that clip is in. If it wasn't in, it would be sticking out like this and this plastic wouldn't go over. So we got this one. We have not done the bottom one yet, so keep that in mind. Grab this, lock that in, come around. We're looking pretty good here. We can grab our hose if we want. Push that in and grab our clamp. We've got our clamp right here. We're just gonna go ahead and pinch down on it. We can use our pliers again. They come in handy for a lot of things. Let's see if I can get it one of these times, huh, Len? Jeez. Go. Now it's important to make sure you line up the clamp where it was sitting on the hose, okay? I'll move it back away again. You can kind of see where it was. You want to get it back to lined up to where it was from, okay? Just like when you find a turtle out in the wild or whatever. It's cute, it's cute. you want to pick it up, you want to play with it, whatever, you're not really supposed to. But anyway, you always want to make sure you put it back where you got it from, okay? So it looks good. That's its home. It's happy there. Let's put it back. That looks pretty great. We've got these, right? We remember how these went. Boom. Boom, okay. Looks pretty good. We'll grab our bolts. We'll go ahead and put those in. Just like that. The same thing on this side. I'm gonna tighten them right up. Feels like it's bottomed out a little bit. Bottomed out a little bit. Got our two black bolts there. These go for this. Go ahead and put these in. You should be able to see kind of an outline on these where uh, the bolts were, whether it's just from dust or maybe it was scuffed away from the washer. Let's see if I can move it. You see where it was scuffed right there? So that's where I want to try to line it back up with. Just like I said before, you put things back from where you got them from, everybody's much happier in the long run. Bottomed out a little bit. Bottomed out a little bit. Cool. Grab this, got a little connector in our lock. Click, shove that in there. Feels pretty great, okay. So now we're gonna put our condenser onto the radiator. Don't forget we have the hooky doos on the bottom of the radiator there. Go like this. That's where the condenser sits into on the bottom. So we're gonna see if we can lift it up. Slide it into the holes. Give it a little wiggle. Put these right here. Just gonna try to put them through. Continuing with our 13 millimeter. There we are. When you're putting these in, you want to make sure the bolts don't go through too far, hit up against the radiator. They shouldn't, but you know, life's like that sometimes. Bottomed out a little bit. Feels great. We'll give everything a shake. Yeah, that feels great. Cool. We've got our little thing down here. See if I can get it maneuvered. Come on, baby. Okay. Cool. Okay. So. pretty good like that. We'll leave this like this for now until we get everything else situated. Um, I just want to kind of get it up to where it's going to go. We're going to have a couple little push clips that are going to go in. 
but we'll do those in a minute, okay? Let's go ahead and get underneath this thing. We'll put on the bottom hose and a couple other things on the bottom and we'll continue. So we've got our bottom line here. I've got my little black clip, super important. Like I said, we're gonna take this. We're gonna see if we can get it lined up with the hole. Wiggle it while we try to push it and see if we can get it in, okay? Sometimes, there it is. It can be a fighter. You just gotta keep pressure and wiggle the line around, okay? A little bit this way, up, down, left, right, whatever you gotta do uh, to get that line in. It needs to be in all the way though, okay? Transmissions are expensive and uh, that's not as easy of a job and I might not be the guy that shows you how to do it. So, I'm gonna push this back over. Like I said before, if it doesn't go all the way over, you know you got an issue. We got our little clip here. We just need to get, make sure we're, we've got everything lined up the way that it needs to go. Let's give this line another little push. I'm gonna grab this, I'm just gonna spin it. See if we can get it clicked in all the way around. <clears throat> Can't feel. Like not yet on this side. That's okay. Let's do what we gotta do to get it clipped in. Yours might just slide right on. There it is. Double check, make sure it's on all the way. Looks pretty great to me. We got both our lines in this clip right here. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it back up. Lock it in. We got that on there, right? Looks good all the way around, even on the top. We'll grab this, a little wiggle. I want it to line up to where it was before. Keep that in mind, right? So right here, lines up with those little prongs, okay? Feels pretty good, it's not going anywhere. Time to install this bad boy right here. Call it what you want and uh, let me know, because I don't know, whatever it is. I'm just gonna stick these little ears, okay? There's two of them, one hole there, one over there. Just to have it be said what I'm doing, because to be able to see it might be kind of difficult. I'm gonna try to slide it in. It's my plan at least, whether it happens or not. Okay, cool. Here's some little push clips. We took them out, so they must go in here somewhere. That one looks like it goes right there. <clears throat> that puppy in there. I'm just gonna find all our little holes, and we're gonna put in all our little push clips. All right. This one right here, see if I can get it in. Looks pretty great. This side right here fell out, that's okay. Not mad about it. Had a Snickers today. Cool. Got my little clippy doer right here. It's gonna go on to the power steering cooler. Just like that, that'll hold that up for now. There's a couple more push pins under there, we'll grab it in a minute. That looks pretty great. Let's grab the top piece that goes up here. We'll get that mounted in. Here we are. We got it. It's like a happy little smile. Gonna slide it in like this. We got bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole, bolt hole. Bolt. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, so that's just gonna go on the outside like that. All right, now we know we got four bolts that go across here. We're gonna have other bolts that go right here. These are much smaller. So these are four bigger bolts. We'll grab those real quick. Four bolts, four holes. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. There's one, let's get them started. If you need to, you can use a little penetrant in there.
Feels good. Just gonna do the same to all four of these. Here we are. Feels great. It's going nowhere. We still got our holes lined up. This right here is where our headlight's gonna be going in, right? That bolt that we came through to get all the way down in there goes right here. Cool beans. So here we go. I just want to show you on the top ear up here where it slides in up here. It's just got a little, um, like a little prong, okay? Six down, goes in that hole, just kind of keeps it anchored, okay? So when you're putting this in, you want to obviously be careful not to mess up the paint on your fender, right? Well, I guess while it's out, I'll show you this actually, sorry. Um, you know, while it was in, I could probably do it on my own, but to show you, um, I've got my little clip here, goes right there. So I'm just going to slide it in. There we are. Just make sure it's down and in. Okay. Grab our lock. There we are. We're locked in. We give the connector a little tug. It doesn't slide out. If it slides out, obviously it's not locked in right. Make sure you get it right, okay? Like I said before, being very careful for the paint on our fenders. I mean, it's your paint job. You can do what you want, but I'm gonna be careful. I'm just gonna try to bring this up, get it into our little hole that I showed you. There it is. Everything's sitting down nice and flush. We've got our hole lined up here, hole lined up there. Looking down in there, it's lined up. Let's look along the bottom, make sure we don't have any wires or anything. Hanging, getting caught, this is still good. That's our little fog lamp, right? That looks like it's lined up. So now we'll go ahead and we'll put in our bolts. And we'll move along. Seven millimeter, nice and snug. There we are. Now we'll go ahead and do the top ones. Get that one in down there. We'll do the same to the other headlamp assembly and we'll get the cover back on. So here we go. We've got our bolts for up top. We've got our two smalls, right? We used a seven millimeter, take those out. Boom, boom. Okay, and we have this big one around here. That's the 10, goes down there. Okay, easy peasy. So we could start in the ones that we can reach, why not? And then all the way down in there is the 10. That one's gonna be the fun one to try to get in. So, I don't know, I'm just gonna wing it. So, now I gotta at least on the hole. Get my magnet out of there. Okay, I got it on the hole. I'm just going to tighten it right down using my 10 millimeter. I don't want to say anything to jinx myself because I still have to do the other side, but uh, yeah, first try. Whoop, whoop. Okay, just check it, make sure it's all lined up along the fender. This looks pretty great. We've got our one, two, three, four mounting bolts. They're all nice and tight. We'll do the same thing to the other side headlamp, and then we'll move along. So here we go. We've got our bumper cover. We're gonna lift it up on here. We're gonna be careful of these edges to make sure that they don't go hitting up against the fender. You know, I mean, and this one's a little damaged, but that wasn't me, by the way. Just playing. It really wasn't, though. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep those edges low, and I'm just gonna scoop the top in up here. Just get it kind of settled in. I'm gonna start a couple of these bolts just to hold it for me. And then I'm gonna work my way along the edges there, get everything settled in along the top, and then I'll go down to the bottom and do the same thing. So, what size is this? 20, Torx bit 20. We'll keep it loose, just in case we have to move some stuff around, right? Just wanna make sure that it can't fall down, hit the floor, damage anything, hurt me, here we are. Let's see. This, I think. Oh, that went on top. Yep. Let's see if I can get it in there. That doesn't go there. Oh, well. <laughs> like I said, I'm keeping all these loose. I'm just starting them in so I can move everything around as I need to. Okay? Nice and loose. Okay, let's come along here. Right up along the 
the headlamp, we have the little scoops, right? You come over here, you got a little clip, 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 okay? So that's where your bumper's gonna wanna ride in. So you're gonna need to bring it up, bring it right up along your headlamp. The bumper cover itself has all these little uh, slots in it, right? That's where those clips are gonna wanna ride. So you're probably gonna need to give it a little tug just to get it into where it needs to go. Same thing to the other side. So we've got the bumper all lined up. It looks great. Couldn't ask for better, really. I'm just gonna take my Torx Bit 20, snug these puppies up. Very nice. All right. Now let's lift it up to our working height so we can get to those wheel wells. We'll get all those put together, then we'll bring it all the way up. We'll plug in our fog lights and finish up along the bottom. So we remember that we had the one seven millimeter head bolt. Goes right up through here, right? Goes through the bottom of the bumper cover, up into the fender. So just use my little tool. You can use a ratchet, whatever you got. I'm just gonna find the hole here. There it is. Nice and snug, okay. Grab this, slide it back into position here. Okay, so now when we look at it, you can see behind there, there's a metal piece. That's where there's a screw. This one's just a big gaping hole. That's a plug, screw, hole, hole, hole. All right, so let's see what we got for parts. We got two screws, perfect. I remember saying we needed two screws and we got Four little push clips. So we didn't lose anything, we're doing all right. There we are. Let's do the push clips first because they'll kind of keep everything kind of generally speaking where it should be, right? And then, uh, you know, we can worry about putting in all those screws after. Here we go. So two screws. I'm just gonna grab my little Torx bit. I got it right here. Sticking with my 20, okay? Turn the wheel, no I'm not. See if I can get this in. I'm gonna grab a ratchet, I'll finish that one off in one second. There we are. Okay, grab my ratchet. Feels great. Okay, all those are still in. Perfect, we'll do the same to the other wheel well, and then we'll bring it up and continue. So now we're gonna put in our fog lamps. Once again, we're gonna be very careful not to touch that glass, okay? We'll just check them one more time, make sure the filament's not broken. We did a lot of moving around. I'm just gonna take it, put it up in here. I'm gonna start by going all the way as far counterclockwise as I can, and then I'm gonna turn it to the right so it locks in. Should be straight up and down in the locked in position, okay? So I'll come over, I'll do the same thing over here. Check it, looks pretty great. The filament's not broken, nothing moving around. I didn't touch the glass. I'm gonna bring it over. I'm gonna turn it all the way counterclockwise as far as I can until it grabs. I'm gonna bring it back to the right. Once it sets in, bring it down, it's locked. It's in the straight up and down position. All ears are in. Cool. So now we're gonna grab this. We got our little triangle ear here. It's gonna slide over that, just like this. Sets in. We're gonna do the same thing to the other side. We've got two bolts, okay? Easy peasy. Right. So I've got my bolts. I'm just gonna take them. I'm just gonna put them in. Okay. 
So now it's time to put these up, up along the top, right? Got our little clips here, right? Like I said, if you looked at this and you didn't see the metal clip, it's probably inside these holes right here. If that was the case, you'd want to just take them out, okay? You can use something like a pocket screwdriver or whatever you have to do. Get them out of there, put them back on this, okay? You can't just go ahead and put this plastic into those metal clips if they're down there. Um, they just don't like to work that way. So anyway, we're gonna line up these with these holes. Being careful not to scratch any of our paint. Just like always, we're trying real hard to do a good job here. That slides under there. This up here. Get our holes lined up. Just give it a little bonk. Bonk, bonk. Just slid in there. Okay. We've got four push clips. One here. One there, here, and there, okay? You can do them in any order. You do you, boo-boo. Slide them in, and then push in the center, okay? Slide it in, push in the center. Go on to the last, slide it in, push in the center. This under here should go right in there. Very nice. Okay. Get this puppy lined up. There's just a little hole in it right there. That slides over this, okay? It's just kind of like a rain drip guard type of deal. There we are. Looks pretty great. We'll do the same to the other side and then we're all set. So I've got my little push clips. I'm going to put them through the little plastic piece and into the bottom area of the radiator couple little holes there so that's where they go oh yeah okay so a quality tool we sell here at 1a auto is a little refills uh, kit it's got a whole bunch of neat stuff in here all sorts of adapters and pretty much every little doodad that you might need to be able to fill this cooling system this is really sweet and it's great for if you're in a pinch um, if you're doing it in your driveway and you don't have access to all the tools that you may or may not need this is wonderful right here here's the part number Whatever you may need is probably inside there. It comes a whole bunch of doodads. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to show you something a little bit different because I have access to it. This right here is just going to, um, I'm going to hook up an airline to it. It's going to create vacuum throughout the whole system, suck out as much air as it can. Once it creates as much vacuum as it can, it's up past the 25 and it's sitting still. It's not going any higher. I'm just going to pinch off the air and I'm going to let it sit there for a little while. And that's going to let me know if there's a, um, a leak in here, like a vacuum leak of any sort. So basically, if there's, an, if there's a place that air can get into the cooling system or coolant can get out of the cooling system, this is going to tell me, okay? It's really wonderful. And also, I can fill the cooling system with it afterward as well. So that's pretty neat. <clears throat> so I'm just going to do this. I'm going to pinch this off. We'll watch our little gauge go up. We want it to be up above the 25. If it stays inside the red or even the yellow, that's really not so good. And odds are once we turn off the air and pinch off all the lines, it's just gonna drop right down to zero over time. So it seems like it's pretty much holding the still right about there. It's not going up any further. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pinch this off. I'm gonna turn that. I'm just gonna sit and I'm gonna watch the gauge for a little bit. Some people will say five, some people will say 10, some people will say 15 minutes. Um, it's your prerogative what you want to do. The longer you wait, obviously, the more you'll be able to tell if there is a leak that's going to cause an issue down the line. So I would say at least wait five minutes. Um, if you don't have 10 to sit around and hang out, you know, five minutes is the minimum, okay? And this time, you can do something like, I don't know, get the coolant that you're going to need, right? You can go with something like this. This is the um, orange coolant. It's recommended for GM cars, trucks. It's the Dex Cool, okay? So it's very important to make sure you use the right coolant. You don't want to go ahead and use the green or anything like that in this particular vehicle. Go with whatever's recommended by the manufacturer, okay? Super important. Um, so now, I've got my coolant. I'm ready to go. I'm going to use this hose, which is the one with the little screen on it. I'm just going to put it in. I marked the hose how far in to go, so that's kind of cool of me, right? Yeah. All right, anyway, I'm going to flip this. And now the vacuum that I just created inside the system is going to just pull the coolant from inside this jug and fill up 
all the holes and everywhere inside the cooling system, okay? This is gonna help prevent giant air bubbles inside the cooling system. Um, a lot of times if you fill it with just like something like the funnel that we showed you, you might get some like big air bubbles and you start up the vehicle and uh, once you start it, the impeller on the uh, water pump will start spinning and it'll turn your big air bubbles into little air bubbles and you'll notice it'll take forever for you to be able to burp out all the cooling system. So I just go with something like this if I have access to it. If I didn't and it was a pinch and that's all I had, I would definitely use that, um, that funnel system that we have there because it is a really nice kit. Um, and you can actually use it even after you do this. You know, once I do this, I can set it up and I can put it on here and just uh, run the vehicle and let it burp out all the air. I can go doing it that way if I want to. So I'm just going to let it do this, making sure that I don't let it uh, suck the container dry and cause air to go inside the system here. That's going to defeat the whole purpose of doing this in the first place. So now I'm going to take my tool off of here, make sure that I keep all the coolant. I don't want to get any on the ground. I'm going to rinse this off. And um, what we're going to do next, what we are going to do next, sorry, is um, we're going to make sure that this is safe. We're going to put our uh, rec recycling receptacle underneath there and we're going to run the vehicle. And we're going to let this uh, burp out any air that's left in there. And then we'll test the coolant, make sure it's where it's supposed to be. Right. We've got that topped off real quick. We're going to run it for a little while, maybe uh, 10, 15 minutes. Let it get nice and hot, burp out any air that's in there. And then we'll recheck it. And once it's good, We'll uh, close it up. All right. Nice and warm. Just ran it. It's up above where the cold fill is. When it's hot, it should be up inside here. So it looks like we're nice and full. Perfect. We got our cap. We already checked it. Looks good. Let's go ahead and close it up. And now we're clear for a nice road test. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts shipped to your door, the place for DIY auto repair. And if you enjoyed this video, please click the subscribe button.